Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 3.3. Number one, we're given a polynomial. And in part A, we're asked to use the rational zeros theorem to generate a list of potential rational zeros. So the rational zeros theorem works like this. You look at the factors of the constant term over the factors of the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient here is 3. The constant term is a, well, negative 6. But since we take the plus or minus anyway, we can just look at factors of 6. So this is plus or minus. And what are the factors of 6? 1, 2, 3, and 6. And the factors of 3 are 1 and 3. So let's go through and generate this list. Plus or minus. 1 over 1 is 1. 2 over 1 is 2, 3 over 1 is 3, 6 over 1 is 6. 1 over 3 is a third, 2 over 3 is 2 thirds, 3 over 3 is 1, which we already have, 6 over 3 is 2, which we already have. So this is our list of potential rational zeros. Part B, we're asked to use Descartes' rule of signs to find the possible number of positive and negative real zeros. So if we look at the uh, possible number of positive real zeros, we look at the variations in sign of the polynomial P of X. So we start off with a positive 3, then a positive 3, then a negative 6, a negative 15, a negative 15, a negative 6. So these are the signs of the coefficients, and I detect only one variation in sign. So this tells me that there's only one positive real zero. And remember, this counts multiplicities. So there's only one real zero, and it only goes in once. To get the uh, number of negative real zeros, I have to look at the variations in sign of P of negative X, the opposite of X. So when I plug in a negative, anytime I have a, an odd power, that's going to change the sign of the coefficient. Anytime I have an even power, it's going to remain the same. So I'm going to, if I plug in the opposite of x here, that negative to the fifth power is going to turn the positive 3 to a negative 3. This is going to stay a positive 3. This will become a positive 6. This will stay a negative 15. This will become a positive 15. And that will stay a negative 6. And so I count the variations in sign. I had one change there. No change here. One change here, one change here, and one change here. So I have one, two, three, four variations in sign. That means I have four, two, or zero negative real zeros. Now, it doesn't mean any of these have to be among the rational zeros. They could be irrational zeros. So now in part C, we have to start using th synthetic division to see if we can locate the real zeros. And so at this point, it's trial and error. On the one hand, we're guaranteed at least one positive real zero. It may not be rational. And on the other hand, we could have lots of negative real zeros. So it all depends. So, you know, you may start with the positive ones, and then you would try, usually, you know, a third, two-thirds, one. None of them will work. You get up to two. Bring down the three. Two times three is six. 
Add that to 3, you get 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Add that to negative 6, you get 12. 2 times 12 is 24. Add that to 5, you get 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Add that to negative 15, you get 3. 2 times 3 is 6, you add it, and there's your 0. So you're happy and sad at the same time because you found a positive real 0, but you know that Descartes' rule of signs counts multiplicity, which means you've got no hope of this going in more than once because Descartes said, since there's only one variation in sign of the polynomial, there's only one positive real zero counting multiplicity. So at this point, you would start trying the negatives, and you start trying to divide the negatives into this quotient polynomial. So you'd try negative one-third, negative two-thirds, none of them work, then you'd get to negative one. Bring down the three, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and you got yourself a winner. Now, Descartes' rule of signs said there could be zero, two, or four negative real zeros, which doesn't discount the fact that this could go in more than once. So we go ahead and try, more, uh, see if it goes in again. Oops, bring down the positive 3. We multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. And now we're really happy because we started off with a fifth degree polynomial and we've worked our way down to a quadratic polynomial. We, this knocked it down to a fourth degree, third degree, and now we're down to a second degree. So at this stage in the game, we factored p of x as x minus 2 times x plus 1 quantity squared times 3x squared plus 3x plus 3. So working with that polynomial, To find the zeros of this polynomial, we set this equal to zero, and we get x equals two, we get x equals negative one, and then from here we get three x squared plus three x plus three is zero. To solve this, I can divide both sides by three or factor the three out. Use the quadratic formula on this guy. If I check the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, a, b, and c are all 1. So I get 1 minus 4, I get negative 3, which is less than 0, which means I get no real zeros out of this. So that means that these are the two real zeros. And what are the multiplicities? Well, I look here, the exponent on that quantity is a 1, so this is multiplicity 1. And this guy here, that's multiplicity 2. So that'll do it for part C.